Hello, everyone. Good evening. And Good evening. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, so last lesson, I made a little mistake. Uh, I suppose I did the assignment and then gave us the assignment again. <laughs> did anyone notice? Hello? I didn't notice because I, I don't know math, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so apparently what we did was compound interest last week. Uh, and so which means that uh, because compound interest, uh, the formula, mathematics, sorry, uh, is, um, Good amount is a principal times one plus rate over, over 100 raised to power n. That's number of years. So which is what we calculated last week. Uh, so uh, in other words, I'm giving you the solution already. So in lieu of that, um, Uh, um, sorry. In, in lieu of that, uh, today we would just, uh, um, I'll just include the second function. Um, I believe we all are aware of the simple interest formula principal times time times rate all over 100, right? Yes. Then yes. Yeah, uh, we'll do that and then we'll look into some of the things we should think about when creating our methods. And, uh, um, and then I will introduce um, concept of strings and um, decision structures. You know, uh, typically programs don't just do maths. At some point in time, the program needs to take a decision, you know, decide whether or not to do this. We are going to look into um, Python support for um, decision making and strings today. So without much ado, let's dive into action. So I'll start with def, as I said, um, I want to define a function, we usually start with the keyword def. Then followed by, I want this to, I want to name the function, calculate simple interests. So I want also principal amount, and I want the user to supply me the number of years. And, uh, so, um, what will this be? Um, results equals to principal amount times number of years times rates. What's rates? Uh, should, is it 10 or 0 0.1? I don't know. I mean, if we say the interest rate is 10%, I don't know, do we divide by 100? I'm sorry, my math is very rusty. It's been a long time. Be 0 0.1. Uh, okay. Okay. So, maybe 0 0.1. Yeah. Times 0 0.1 divided by 100. Uh, so, and then rather than do this, so just do this. Yeah, good. So again, so this is um, uh, rename calculate compound interests. It's, and then I'll follow this with 
I'll collate simple interest and we'll pass in 1000 and then just so that we'll see how they differ and uh, calculate simple interests. Yeah, uh, then we'll, um, 50 and five. All right, so our simple interest function and our compound interest function is complete. Let's run and let's see the results. So, um, so this is our compound interest for uh, $1,050. This is our simple interest for 10 years at 10% and so on and so forth. Right. So now there are a couple of problems with this, right? Um, most of what we'll do for this introductory material will revolve uh, around these functions. Uh, we assume that uh, we are a loan institution, or we loan people money, or we are an investment bank, whichever rocks your boat. And our business is entirely centered around making sure that the correct interest rate is calculated for our clients. So as much as possible, uh, we would look at decision structures and strings today. In the coming weeks, we'll look at how to make these functions into a command line utility, such that uh, when you go to the command line interface, you can say, oh, I want, you can type in a command to the computer and the interest rate will be calculated for you. And uh, we'll take that a step further. We'll design a web page where the user can go and put in the amount he wants to invest and the number of years he wants to invest in. And we can calculate using simple interest or compound interest uh, and report the results to him on the web page. So most of what we'll be doing will revolve around that sphere. And this is, that also means that there are some things that we will not touch because of time and because uh, next week we have just, I think two or three classes. So I'll try to be as fast as possible. Um, yeah, so looking at our calculate compound interest uh, problem, um, we have designed this function and we are assuming that the user would be honest, right? He will not try to trick the system. Now, but here is the thing. Uh, one key thing about writing a program is you have to think about every possible scenario that could play out and write your program defensively such that it does not break. Now, what are the possible problems? Let's, let's work with the compound interest. What are the possible problems that could arise from this uh, function? So we are assuming that the user would always have an amount and will always have number of years, right? Now, but what if the user passes in zero as the principal amount? Yeah, that does not make sense. I mean, you can't be wasting resources calculating interest on zero. So which means that uh, this program, this calculate compound interest program, should be able to check the value of principal amount. If it is zero, then it should not even try to do the calculation, just return zero to the user, right? Same thing goes if principal amount is less than zero. Now, it does not make sense to try to calculate interest on a negative amount, correct? So, which means also that we can say that if principal amount is less than or equal to zero, there's no need to try to calculate interest. We'll just return zero, correct? Also, let's look at the second parameter. If number of years, If number of years 
is equal to zero or if number of years if number of years is less than zero then also it does not make sense to even calculate the interest because then you can't be trying to invest for a negative amount of years which does not even make logical sense and you shouldn't even be calculating interest if you're going to put your money in today and collect it today i mean there's no point no interest will accrue right so which means that our program should be able to defend against these scenarios and this is the kind of thinking that goes into deciding functions or writing programs you think about the things that make sense and the things that don't make sense and you ensure that your program is able to work correctly when those things that don't make sense uh, um, supply. So for instance, uh, I'll make an, ex uh, an example here. I would take this and uh, I would supply a negative amount and let's see what will happen. Good. So what does this mean? We have negative interest. <laughs> Would we take the money from the customer or not? I mean, interest should always be positive. So like I said, um, this comp calculate compound interest and simple interest uh, functions, though correct, but they are erroneous when the user decides to be mischievous. So we're going to focus around defending against that. So. To do that, I need to introduce something to us. And uh, it's something called uh, decision making. Sorry. Decision making in Python. So decision making in Python is governed by one if else construct. Sorry, I should be commenting this if else constructs right and uh, is it and uh, select case constructs right good so we'd we'll focus around this today and uh, try to make the best of it so what's oh, supposing i want to use an if else construct what does that look like? I'm going to comment everything from here to here, just so that the output, uh, the outputs will not disturb us. So, what does an if else construct look like? An if else construct begins like this with the keyword if, right? And a Boolean expression. Now, what is a Boolean expression? A Boolean is expression is an a Boolean expression is an expression that evaluates to true or false, right? So, for instance, um, let's is my name Peter that would evaluate to true or false, right? Because my name is either Peter or it is not Peter. Is one greater than zero? That is a Boolean expression because one is either greater than zero or not. So in essence, a Boolean expression is any expression, any statement whatsoever that evaluates to true or false. So what does that mean? Um, Boolean operators begin with example of Boolean. Okay, so sorry, let, let me come this way. The Boolean expression begins with the with an operand, a comparator, a Boolean comparator, uh, a Boolean operator, and another operand. Right? So let's say, for instance, you want to know if one is greater than zero, right? In this case, the first operand would be one, the second operand would be greater than, and the, so the operator would be greater than, and the second operand would be zero. 
is one greater than zero? I hope I typed that correctly. True, one is greater than zero. Is one greater than or equal to zero? Yes, one is greater than or equal to zero. Is five less than six? Is five less than or equal to six? Right. Now, what if we want to compare if two things are equal? How does that work in Python? The equality operator is simply is five or six equal to, sorry, this is JavaScript, six equal to six, right? So over here, we have one greater than zero, which would evaluate to true. Is one greater than or equal to zero, that would evaluate to true. Is five less than six, that would also be true. Is five less than or equal to six, that would be true also. Is six equal to six? Note the double equal sign. You use two equal operators, uh, two equal signs, whatever, to represent the equality operator, which would be two. If I were to change this to seven, uh, sorry, this would uh, evaluate to false now, as we would see when we, when we run the function. Yay. So armed with this, okay, so what if we wanted to see if six is not equal to seven? That would be six. We use the exclamation mark, the equal to, and then the second operand, and then we run. Good. So six is not equal to seven? That is definitely true, right? So good. Armed with this, we we know all the possible Boolean expressions that we can possibly use. This is by no means, however, I must mention this, this is not all. I think there are about 12 or 13, but for the purpose of time, I would just restrict myself to this. And um, I, would fund, I would do you well to furnish you with uh, resources at the end of this lesson, so you can go look up the other operators or other forms of Boolean expressions or you can brush up on that. So, uh, you know, if you decide to go further than this. Right, so anyway, point is, um, we now know all the possible Boolean expressions we could use. So if we wanted to take a decision now to say, if one is greater than zero, do something else, do something, do another thing. How would we go about writing that? It begins with this. If, if what? If one is greater than zero. Then again, remember that when I have, uh, when a function or a decision structure, uh, much like, okay, let me, let me rephrase this way. Uh, I don't know if any of us is uh, familiar with Java. I believe we are. Now, remember that in Java, whenever you want to signify the body of a function or something, you typically will do, uh, let's say, if A is equal to B. This is Java, so please don't expect it to be correct. Yeah, this is curly braces, right? Well, like I said, in Python, we don't use curly braces. When we are faced, instead of whenever we feel the need to use curly braces, we just use this. In other words, I'm done with this line. I want to go to the next line. So let's go back to us typing our function, our uh, decision making, our if else fun, uh, construct. So if one is greater than zero, notice no parentheses, no brackets. Now, if one is greater than zero, what do I want to do? Maybe I want to print one, sorry. One is greater than zero, right? The same way, if one 
is greater than or equal to zero. Print one is greater than or equal to zero. Right. Um, I would, okay, I'll do one more. Notice I have to backspace. If five is less than or equal to six. Hold on. Print five is less than or equal equal to six. Right. And again, if six is not equal to seven, right? Will be print six is not equal to seven. Right. So I'm going to remove all of this and we are going to run this script and see the results. Good. Now, notice also that if I do this, if I say if C is equal to seven, this will be false. Notice that this would not print anything. We will not see, the, we will not see this line in the output. Good, so I'm running again. And then there is no output for this. Why? Because this function evaluates to false. So, Rounding up on this, we can say that the if construct, it's like this. If Boolean expression is true, right? Do this. That's the general format. So it follows that the line or whatever is after this if construct will only run if the condition evaluates to true. If it doesn't evaluate to true, this first condition, this uh, statement after the if will never run. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, please, I just want to quickly inform the house that uh, the meeting might go off anytime soon and uh, immediately goes off, just try and reconnect back with the same link that you used before. And uh, we'll wait for like one minute so that everybody can join back and the lecture will continue. Thank you very much, Peter. Yeah. Go on. Okay. So now supposing, supposing um, I want to do, I want something else to run. Like, I mean, it does not make sense that you only do something if something is true. So, so supposing, just suppose I want to do something else if that thing was false. How would I achieve that in Python? So that gives, that brings us to the if else construct. Now, the if else construct is no different from the if construct, except that we backspace one and we put an else keyword and we'll do something else if the if condition is false. So it goes this way. If the Boolean expression is true, do this. If it is not true, do this. Kind of like true or false. Is your name Peter? Yes, come here. Else, go. Don't come or whatever. You get the idea, right? So I'm going to walk this into all of our previous if, uh, sorry, all of our previous if uh, constructs. So if one is greater than zero, print one is greater than zero. Else, else, notice I end with column again, and then I print one is not greater than zero, right? Else, column, print, one is not, sorry, one is not greater than or equal to 
zero, right? Else, semicolon again, uh, colon rather, sorry, print five e five is not less than or equal to six, right? And else, print six is not equal to, sorry, six is not equal to seven. Right, so let's run this. And you see that for this last one, remember that we did not have this expression because six is not equal to seven. But now, thanks to this else construct, we can see that six is not equal to seven is printed here on the screen. Good. Now, um, I don't know. How do we do this? Now, notice that uh, while writing all of these expressions, I used explicit values. Now, it does not make sense that I'm saying if one is greater than zero. Of course, I know one is greater than zero, right? So, I mean, it wouldn't make sense if, my, if a program is trying to make a decision of something that does not require a decision. I mean, one will always be greater than zero. But what am I trying to say here? I'm saying that if we say variable one is equal to one, right? I will say variable two is equal to zero. What does this mean? We can replace our if else construct with variables. Is variable one greater than variable two? Does that make